Okay, we're in section 36, which is the uh, material on two by two linear systems. And what we're, what we're doing here is we're using a technique called addition or elimination. And we've covered this in lecture. What we covered is we'd like to form a, where they're certainly ordered X, Y equals a number. And there's two equations. So again, if you look at this over here, it's AX plus BY equals C, DX plus EY equals F, right? It was in that form. So I'm gonna say that's standard form, all right? What we do is we use the process of elimination by selecting a variable to get rid of, we find the LCM, and we, we find what, multi, what, what multiplication would produce an opposite of their coefficients, all right? So we'll go through examples. We've already done some examples, of course. And what I'm claiming about these problems over here is that they're relatively simple to do. All right, if you understand the technique and the reason that we really are writing problems that really have very nice solution to them. All right, so let's go to the whiteboard and we'll start doing the examples. Give me a second. Okay, we'll do example number one. I'm gonna pull to the side and then we'll do example number two. Okay, what we're gonna do over here is we're looking at the problem and, and immediately what I notice is that both of these equations are in, are in standard form. And what I mean by that, there's um, you know, X, Y equal a number, X, Y equals a number. And what's nice about this thing is that if I just simply add these two lines together, what do I get? Well, I get five X, the Y's disappear and we get 20, relatively simple. Now what we recommend you do, divide through by five, and what would you get there? Well, let's take a look at it. You would get X equals four. Now, how do you get the Y? I would recommend that you pick one of these two equations and I'm gonna pick this equation here to figure out what the Y is. And what do I do? I just plug it in. So if X is four, it would be four plus Y is equal to three. What would I do now? Subtract four from both sides. And what would you get? No, it's something pretty simple. You would get Y is equal to minus one. So I have my answer now. The answer is X equals four and Y equals minus one. Now, certainly in the homework, you can just simply check to make sure you get the right answer. It says X is four and Y equals minus one. I just wanna briefly go through it. Another way to write that down is as an ordered pair and the ordered pairs in this case would be X comma Y. So would that be four comma minus one? Now, if you're on the exam, you have no answer key to check. So what I would recommend is just check in the original system. Let me write that down for you, check. And in the original system, I believe X is four. So when the, I would get four and 16, I'm checking it in the original system. And I believe Y is minus one. So what do I get over there? I'm just plugging it in. Does that give me three? Yes. Does this give me 17? Yes. This is definitely a correct answer. All right, let's go to number two. And when I'm looking at number two, I'm going to pull it to the side. And again, my hope is that it's going to be relatively simple to do. All right, blow this up. And what do I notice immediately? It's written in proper form. X, Y equal number. X, Y equal number. It's lining up beautifully. What do I have to do? I have to select one of the variables to get rid of. And what I'm going to select is I'm going to select the Y. All right, so what I have to do now is I got to find the LCM between those two numbers, which is three. These are the coefficients in two. Relatively simple, it's six. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by two, and I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by minus three. Now, why is that? Their coefficients would become opposites. Let's put this down, and what do you get? Well, you get 4x, I'm multiplying the top equation by two, what does that mean? Both sides are being multiplied by two. Plus six Y is equal to eight. Second line, what do I get? Minus 15 X minus six Y is equal to three. All right, what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna add the two equations together. And usually things work out pretty nicely. What do you get over here? Minus 11 X equals 11. And what do I do? Divide both sides by 11, minus 11, I'm sorry. And what do you get? X equals minus one. Now granted mistakes happen. So I'm not gonna say this is a correct answer. I'm just gonna say it's a nice answer. 
What am I going to do now? Well, what I'd like to do is I like to plug it into one of the two equations. It's incidental which one you use. I'm just going to use the first line. And what do you get there? Well, if x is minus 1, you would get minus 2 plus 3y is equal to 4. What would I do now? I would add 2 to both sides. And you would get 3y is equal to 6. Then what I do is divide both sides by 3. And what do you get? y equals 2. All right. So I'm going to claim I think I know the answer. But I always think, I can't really tell you it's definitely right. I like the numbers, though. So x is minus 1 and y is 2. I'll box it. You can also write down as an ordered pair, x comma y minus 1 comma 2. I want to go to the answer key and check it. And when is the answer key? We, got, we in fact got the right answer. Let me point this out though, on exams, you don't know you have the right answer. You want to check it to make sure you have the right answer. So I'm going to put the check down. And I can't emphasize this enough. The check is done with the original system. We're checking it. And I want to see if I got the right answer. So, you know, I believe X is minus one. So what would you get? You would get minus two, minus five. All right. And I believe Y is two. So you get plus six, plus four. Minus two plus six is four. That checks. Minus five plus four is minus one. And that checks. I'm looking at the original system. It works out beautifully. All right. So we did problems number one and two, relatively simple. And again, I want to point out for the students that have a hard time following. They say things may go too quickly for them. There's little videos on the side. I put out what I mean by that. You can watch these spot videos. Furthermore, if you want, come back later in the week and rewatch the lectures if you have to. All right. Um, you do need to practice, though. That's, that's why some students are, are particularly slow at this. Very little practice goes on. And what I mean by that prior practice, practice with arithmetic, practice with simple algebra. All right, let's go to the next page. And I'm looking at this one over here. This is number three now. And I'm gonna try to do it. And I'm gonna pull it to the side. And I'm gonna push this over and I'm gonna try it. And what do I notice? Things are lining up beautifully, right? So X, y number equals a number x y equals a number everything lines up beautifully i need to select something to get rid of and i'm going to select the y so i'm going to point it out to you and what's the lcm between four and two it's four but relatively simple so what i'm going to do i got to make their coefficients opposite and i'll do that by multiplying the bottom by minus two and if you did that what would you get let's write it down you get six x minus 4y is equal to 6, minus 10x, minus 4y. Whoops, I made a mistake. I immediately know I made a mistake by saying minus 2. And how do I know that they're not opposites? That was crazy. So I'm going to get my eraser out. This happens all the time. That was a mistake. I'm multiplying the bottom by 2 because it would make it the opposite of minus four, make it four. So let's go through that again. I apologize for that. That would give me 10X plus four Y is equal to 10. What do I do now? Add these two equations together and something will disappear. That's why it's called addition and elimination. So it'd be 16 X, the Y's disappear, I get 16. Now, so my question, why are the numbers always working out so nicely? We write problems to make them work out nicely. Divide both sides by 16, and you get x is 1. All right. Now what do I do? I go back to one of these two equations. Let me pick the second equation now and see if I can do that. And again, I believe x is 1. So what do I get? 5, because 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2y equals 5. Subtract 5 from both sides. What do you get? 2y equals 0. Divide both sides by 2. This may seem overkill to you. And y is 0. So I know my answer. What is it? X is one and Y is zero. Nice, simple answers. You could also write this as an ordered pair, one comma zero. Let me get my answer. I'm going to check it. And I do see that. All right. I still want to check it. Now, why do I want to check it? I want to see if I'm right. So you always check it in the original. What am I checking? Checking something pretty simple, actually. And that point is X is one. So I get six and five and the Y is zero. 
And that does work out beautifully, all right? That was number three. Let's go to number four. Number four looks a little strange to me, but I'm gonna go through it with you. All right, I'll pull it to the side. And I got troubles and I'll tell you what the troubles are. The only real requirement for this technique is that the equal signs line up. I got the X's lining up, I got the Y's lining up, but over here, you know, something very strange and I don't wanna deal with this. I wanna get it into a proper form. And let me go through that with you. Now, for the students could do this quickly, please do it quickly. But I wanna write the first equation. I'm gonna erase this later, which is four X minus two Y is equal to seven X minus two. Well, to get this in the proper form, I actually have to subtract away seven X from both sides. And what would you get? Minus three X minus two Y is minus two. And that's proper form. Now, if you can do that in your head, do it in your head, all right? I'm gonna do the second equation. I'll write that down for you. And what's that? Two X plus eight Y is equal to five Y plus eight. Well, I'm gonna get in the proper form by subtracting five Y from both sides. And what do you get? Well, you get 2x plus 3y is equal to 8. And write that down for you. I'm going to get my eraser out. And I'm going to erase this little busy work on the side over here. Again, if you need additional support, you want to come by during office hours, we'd be more than happy to uh, walk you through this over and over again, as many times as you need to get to learn the material. All right, what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna select something to eliminate. And I'm gonna eliminate, I don't know, let's eliminate the X's. What I need to do, LCM, that stands for least common multiple, whoops. And I want the least common multiple between three and two, and that would be six. So I'm gonna multi multiply the top by two and the bottom by three. Let's write that down for you. Two times minus three X is minus six X. Two times minus two Y is minus four Y. Two times minus two is minus four. That's pretty simple. Three times, the, I'm doing the bottom equation now, six X, nine Y equals 24. I'm gonna add these two equations together. And what do you get? You get five Y, the X has disappeared. That's why they call it elimination equals 20. What do you do now? Divide both sides by five. What do you get over here? y equals four, all right? What am I gonna do now? I'm gonna go back to the original system. And I really do mean that to find out what the, uh, what the x is, all right? So I don't know which equation I wanna choose. I, I guess I'll choose this one over here. I know it's tough. We wanna to encourage you to try. So I believe y is four. So what would you get? You would get two x plus, well, if y is four, that would be 32, right? equals, well, if y is four, what would you get? Well, 20 plus eight, All right? I'm gonna keep moving along. And what, is he, what do you get there? You get two x plus 32 equals 28. I'm gonna subtract 32 from both sides. And what do you get? Two x equals minus four. And what I'm gonna do? Divide both sides by two. And what do you get? x equals minus two. So I have an answer now. x is minus two and y is equal to four. I like the numbers, by the way. I don't know if it's right, but I do like the numbers. You could also write this as an ordered pair, minus two comma four, all right? Let's look at the k, and I do see this in the k, all right? However, I wanna point out on exams, you still wanna check it, all right? So I wanna point out what I mean by checking it. You should always check it in the original. So let's check it. I'll put this over here and I'm going to start plugging in. I believe X is minus two. So that's going to be minus eight, minus four. I believe Y is four. So that would be minus eight plus 32 equals, I believe X is minus two. That's minus 14 minus two. I believe Y is four. That would be 20 plus eight. Is this correct? I'm looking at it. Minus eight minus eight is minus 16. And minus 14 minus two is also minus 16. That worked. Second equation, minus four plus 32 is 28. 
and 20 plus eight is 28. It worked beautifully, all right? Now, again, P, P question, students often question, why do they work so nicely? We write them to work nicely, we do. All right, now I, I know number five, if you look at it and say, I don't think I could do that. I remember doing a problem like that. It's a mixture problem. So I think you probably know when I do mixture problems, I'm gonna to try to do the mixture problem the way we've done in the past. I'll push this on the side. And I'm gonna say that it's it's a mixture. And a chemist with has two alloys, you know, one with gold and lead in it, another one with gold and lead in it. How many grams of each alloy should be used to make an alloy? Yada, yada, yada. I think I've seen this before. So I'm gonna summarize it by putting down my pictures. And we've done this many times before. This is typical at this level that we're mixing two things together to get a final mixture. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down what, the, what, what this chemist has. An alloy is a mixture of metals. And the first box is labeled 10% gold and 15% lead. All right, okay. The other one is 30% gold and 50% lead. All right, how many grams of each? I don't know. This is X grams and this is Y grams. Let me, let me write the word gram down. Cause I noticed my G looks like a Y. All right. So I wrote down what he, what he has and what he wants. He has, you know, the first alloy is 10% gold, 50% lead. The other one's 30% gold, 50% lead. Where am I reading this stuff? Well, I'm reading it over here. Then he says, how many grams of each? I don't know. I have no idea. Should be used to make an alloy that's 70 grams. I'll write this down. Whoops. This is 70 grams. That contains 109. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. I did not read. And that's a problem. He doesn't want 70 grams. He wants 70 grams of gold and 109.5 grams of lead. All right, I know it's confusing. We wanna encourage you to try though. So what I'm gonna say is the first guy I'm talking about up here, 10% of this number is gold. So I'm gonna start talking through the gold part of the problem. So 10% of that X is gold and 30% of this Y is gold. So 10% of the X grams is gold and 30% of the Y grams is gold. How much gold would we get in the end? 70 grams. Let's do the next guy. I know it's tough. 15% of the first guy, there's X grams there, is lead. We're talking about lead now. And 50% of Y is lead. How much lead do we have? 109.5 grams. I've got two equations, two unknowns. If the decimals are scaring you, you're gonna to have to deal with that. I'm gonna say it's not really worrying me too much. I wanna eliminate something and I wanna eliminate the X's. So what I need to find is I need to find the LCM between 0.10 and 0 0.15. And what's that gonna be? It's like having dimes and 15 cent pieces it's 30 cents would be the lowest, uh, the least common multiple of that, all right? So I'm gonna write this down for you. I'm gonna multiply the top equation by three. You're allowed to use calculators if you're struggling and the bottom equation by minus two. Let's write that down for you. And what do you get? 0 0.30 X plus, well, three times, you know, 0 0.3 would be 0 0.9 Y. And three times 70, whoa, that's what, 210, right? I'm gonna do the minus two. Minus two times that uh, 0 0.15 is gonna be minus 0 0.30 minus 
Well, that would be 1.00y. And I got to do two times the 109. Well, that's going to be, let's see, 218, 219. It's a negative number. Let me just make sure I did that right. You know, two times 100 is 200, two times 9 is 18. That's 218, and two times 0.5 is 1. I think I did it right. What am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to add these together. Again, if you're having trouble with the arithmetic, I would say try to get better at it. But the bottom line is you can't get better at it. Use a calculator. What does this give you? I'll write this down for you. It would give you minus 0 0.10y. What is this giving me over here? Minus 9. What am I going to do now? I'm going to divide both sides by minus 0 0.10. Now, I don't think that looks too bad, but you may disagree with that. And you may have to use a calculator. I, I'm not going to use a calculator to do that. What do you get? Y equals, and you know, minus 0.9 divided by 0.10 is going to be 90. All right. So someone says, what are you going to do now? I'm, I'm exhausted. Well, I want to find out what X is. But before I do that, I want to point out, it means I have 90 grams of this guy. All right. I grant that I could be wrong. We'll look at the answer later but I want to see if I can figure out the X. How am I going to do that? I'm going to pick one of these equations and the one I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick this one here. Let's write this down. And what do you get? If I did that, what do you get? You get 0 0.10 X plus, oh boy, 0 0.3 times nine is 27 equals 70. I'm going to subtract 27 from both sides. And yep, if you need a calculator, please do so. And what does that give me? Let's see, 43, right? And then divide both sides by 0 0.10. And I'm not beyond making an error, by the way. And I really mean that. I'm not beyond making an error. And what would that give me? 430. Write that down. All right, I'm gonna check out my answer key. Let's see how we did. 430 grams of the 10%, 15% alloy. We got that. 90 grams, this sort of here, of the 30, 50. We're good. All right, now what do you need to do? And this, this is, I always say it's a weak link. You need to practice. All right, you need to do this homework. All right, let me outline that for you. You need to do homework. What am I going to do? Problem number one. They should be in line with what we've been doing in the classroom. In other words, they should be relatively simple if you've been following along. Now, granted, if you're studying and you can't get this stuff, you need to come by during office hours or at least see the tutoring, uh, the tutors at S. County College, and they'll help you through this material. Your goal is to get through this. That requires hard work on your end. Thank you for paying attention. See you next time.